Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. And right now in Minnesota, it's snowing like crazy. They're promising nine to 13 inches. I wish I could film it. It's like blizzard style outside, but it is dark already, so I can't really do that. That's too bad. But anyway, what this video is really about is I wanna share 10 must have tools under 30 bucks that every single technician or do it yourselfer or handyman should have in their tool bag. Most of these tools are not HVAC specific, and I do wanna point out that I am not sponsored to promote any of these products. These are just simply tools that I have in my tool bag that I really like. But to be honest, I'm more interested in what your favorite tools are. If you could please share that with me in the comments below, and maybe I'll add that to my tool bag as well. Okay, so for tool number one, if you're a repairman and you still don't have one of these, honestly, you've been needlessly suffering for a long time and you should really get one of these, and that is a magnetic tray. These things are super awesome. I believe everybody should have one, regardless of what trade you're in. And they simply hold all your common bits and any loose screws that you have. If you're an HVAC technician, you'll know exactly what this is. I got a quarter inch hex bit, a 3 8 and a 5 16 And they all fit nicely into this little magnetic tray that has a magnet on the back of it, and I could stick it to the furnace or to any appliance that I'm working on. And when I'm done with it, I could just stick it to my tool bag, any metal part on my tool bag, and it just sits there waiting for my next call. A magnetic tray like this guy right here will set you back about six bucks on Amazon. And tool number two is my favorite flashlight of all time, which is this guy right here, camouflage clip light. I started out with, you know, one of those older lamps the lanterns that you hang on a hanger and it had a long extension cord. I had that for a while when I started. Then I went to a flashlight in my teeth. Then I evolved into a headlamp. And finally, I landed on this thing right here. And I've been using this for about four years now. This is actually my fourth flashlight. Two of them I accidentally melted by putting them on hot surfaces. And one of them I just dropped one too many times. So this is flashlight number four, but these things are so awesome. They have LED lights in front here, which is what I normally use. And then it has an actual flashlight on the top. And it does have a hanger, just like any classic flashlight, any HVAC classic flashlight. And my favorite part is that it pivots. So you can stick it to a furnace and pivot whatever direction you want or stick it inside of an appliance or a furnace or an air conditioner, whatever you're working on. It pivots and it has these really strong magnets on the bottom right here and a magnet on the back as well. And these magnets are pretty strong. I mean, if I don't secure a furnace door and I go to take this flashlight off, the flashlight comes off with the furnace door. So just out of curiosity, let's see which magnet is stronger. The one on the magnetic tray or the one on the flashlight? And I know that the ones on the flashlight are very strong, so let's just see. Just like I thought, the flashlight is victorious. The LED lights are very bright, and pretty much every customer's home that I go to that is a do-it-yourselfer, every time somebody sees this flashlight, they want one immediately. And if you're curious, um, it's powered by three AA batteries, and they do last quite a while from my experience. And on Amazon, one of these goes for about 27 bucks. And moving on to tool number three, we have a flexible bit holder. This thing is really awesome and it saved me many times from tight spots, especially on carrier furnaces, the ones where the flame sensor is super hard to get to. These things are awesome. I mean, it goes behind the gas pipe, it goes behind the vent pipe, and it gets to the flame sensor. Getting it out is a lot easier usually than putting it back in, but with this thing, it makes your life so much easier. You don't have to take anything apart. You don't have to struggle with that flame sensor for 20 minutes trying to put it back in. So the way it works is pretty obvious, but let me just do a little quick demonstration. So you put any bit you want in here, you put it into your drill, and only the inside moves and the outside doesn't. So you can reach in whatever you're trying to reach and put that screw in or take a screw out. Very useful tool. I can't say I use it too often, but whenever I do use it, it really does save my day. And I like this thing so much that I even have two of them. One's a little smaller, one's a little bigger. Does the same thing. 
I bought these separately, but they do sell them in a kit now, and you can get both of them for 11 bucks. When I bought this at Home Depot, just this big one alone was 18 bucks. But if you're a technician and you don't have one of these, I would highly recommend it. You won't regret it. Guys, I just remembered that I forgot to get gas for my snowblower. I'm gonna get some exercise tomorrow. But that's okay, because we're moving on to tool number four, and that is this lovely little tool right here, which is a 105 degrees angled bit holder. So it's very similar to the previous one, which is the flexible bit holder, except this one, you know, it makes like a long turn, whereas this one is a little bit more sharp. So immediate turn, which comes in very handy in tight little spots where you have to get a screw. So you can put in one of these, or for example, let's say you have a little flathead screw, a pesky little guy that even a stubby little screwdriver doesn't fit to get to it. You could put in one of these, and I mean it's like an inch, inch and a half space you got there to get to that screw. So long story short, this thing is super awesome. It saves me from a lot of tight little squeezes. Put it into your drill, and just like the flexible one, only the inside spins but the outside doesn't. And every time I leave one of these little guys at a customer's house as a souvenir, I always make sure to go and get another one because these things are really awesome and they do get me out of a pinch quite a bit. But luckily this is only my third one and the one I have right now is a Milwaukee, which is just over $30, which promptly disqualified it from this list. But the reason I'm still showing it to you is because there's other ones, generic brands or off brands, that are pretty much the same thing, and they're about nine bucks that you can get on Amazon. I've used those generic ones and I haven't had any problems with them. But I do want to point out that these adapters, this 105 degree, 90 degree, or the flexible ones, they're not made for a lot of torque or a lot of pressure. So if you had it set to the drill speed or like 22 or something, these things will get all mangled up and stuff. So they're not designed to take on a lot of pressure. If you do want something a little more heavy duty, I know Dewalt makes some really good ones. One they have is a 90 degree, so this is a 105. The one they have is actually a 90 degree. And another cool one that they have is a flexible bit holder with a 90 degree adapter on top of it as well. So that one's pretty awesome, but I've never actually bought it myself. I've been able to get away with just using these two. And next up, we have tool number five. For a long time, I was content with six inch drill bit extensions and they were enough, but I was walking through Home Depot one day and I saw one of these and I bought it and I've never went back since. These 12 inch extensions are definitely the way to go, especially in furnaces. Sometimes the burner box, you have to take out a screw that's in the back and it's about, I don't know, seven, eight inches in. With the six inch extensions, you're kind of struggling to get in there. But with these longer ones, especially this one I got right here, it's very slim, so it fits into tight spaces. You can really reach some far and hard to get screws with it. And this thing has just been great and comes in really handy sometimes. And once in a while, I'll even use it as simply a one foot, you know, a ladder or something. If I need to get something in the ceiling or some ductwork or something, this thing reaches it no problem really high up. So it's great to have in your tool bag a 12 inch extension. And if you have all of these, you can really make an impressive extension combination. But long story short, this thing is really nice to have in your tool bag, saves you from a tough spot once in a while, and it'll set you back about $13 on Amazon. And for tool number six, allow me to introduce you to my HVAC necklace. Whenever I'm at work, this is what I always wear for my necklace. And that is this right here. So whenever I need it, I just take it out. And this right here is a mini alligator jumper cable, which is perfect for low voltage jumping. You can jump safety switches with it to test it, or you can jump the thermostat at the thermostat itself or the control board. These little alligator clips are just perfect for that. So for example, I have a control board right here. If I have to jump or something, Let's say I'm jumping R to W to get me some heat. I can put one alligator on here and one alligator on here. 
and voila, we got the heat jumper. I really enjoy these little alligator clips. Obviously, it's a lot easier to use them to jumper something instead of a piece of wire. And these little guys can be bought on Amazon for $5. Usually, they come in a pack of 20. So when I ordered myself one of these, sometimes I lose them. I actually brought them to my workplace and shared them with the rest of my coworkers, other HVAC techs, and each of them got like two of these. So that was pretty cool. For five bucks, you get 20 of these. Sometimes you lose them, sometimes you leave them as a souvenir. So having a batch of 20 does really help. And tool number seven is just an upgrade of tool number six, and that is magnetic jumpers. So instead of alligators, you have these magnetic little jumpers which work really slick on thermostats that have really tiny screws. So if you can't get a jumper on the thermostat screws, these things work great for that. Or on control boards, you can just stick them to the screws there. Personally, I think that's a genius idea. I think everything should be magnetized. Magnets are just awesome. They really help make the job a lot easier. These little guys are great, but a little bit on the expensive side. They cost about $15 for just one set. Moving on, we have tool number eight, which is a mini three amp breaker. These are perfect for tracking down shorts. So if you're an HVAC technician and you work on furnaces, I'm sure you've had times where you went through quite a few of those three amp fuses or five amp fuses. In fact, myself, I used to just carry a little, you know, those little boxes that have five to 10 of the three amp fuses. And if I have a short, a wild short that I can't track down, I have to just narrow it down to try to find where the short is. I used to go through a lot of fuses like that, up to like five burnt three amp fuses. And later on, I discovered that I could simply just wire in a little three amp breaker and use that instead of the fuses so I don't have to keep going through all the fuses. So this little breaker, it comes without these wires. It just comes like this. And for example, we have our control board right here. There's a three amp fuse. So if you have a short on the low voltage side, you would take this fuse out and instead of the fuse, you would use these spade connectors to plug in your little three amp breaker. And now you can proceed with your tests. And if you still have a short, this little three amp breaker will trip. You will reset it and you can continue doing your tests until it stops tripping. And only then do you put in a new fuse. So a nifty little tool. I really like it. I use it a lot. This is one of my favorite tools. It's a lot better than going through all the fuses. But like I said, this thing does come with only the breaker. It does not come with the wires. So you would simply just need two small pieces of wire. You would put female connectors on one end and male spade connectors on the other. And that's all it takes. Now, if you don't want to mess with the wires yourself, if you don't want to crimp the connectors on there and stuff, they do sell little mini poppers, which is essentially the same thing, except it has a push button breaker instead of the little switch breaker. And those already come with the wires and spade connectors on them, except they cost three times more. So this little circuit breaker right here costs about five bucks. That little popper costs about 15 bucks on Amazon. And tool number nine is a tool that saved me on numerous occasions. And that is a little tool that is called a pocket telescoping magnetic grabber. And it's just a simple little tool that you can put in your pocket with a magnet at the end, kind of slides out. And if you drop a screw in some ductwork or in an appliance, in a furnace, if you lose a screw, this thing can really save your day. I've had plenty of times where I dropped some screw and I'm thinking to myself, oh, no, 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 I really need that screw. And then I remember I have this thing and you know, I feel so much better. So I pick that screw up and the day is saved. So if you don't have one of these in your pocket, I would definitely suggest getting one. It'll only set you back five bucks on Amazon. And last but not least, we have tool number 10, and this one's a little bit unique. Can anybody guess what this is? This is a dental scraping tool. When I just started working, one of my mentors the senior tech I was working with, he highly recommended this thing and I thought it was a little odd, but after I used it a couple times, I realized that this thing does work really great on burners, on small little orifices, and especially on furnaces, the older furnaces that have a pilot assembly where it has a pilot hood and a small little orifice. One of these things will really get that clean 
to scrape all that gunk off and to make sure that that orifice is nice and clean. It's basically just a metal shaft with two picks on either end. So this handy little tool has worked great for me and it's only around seven bucks on Amazon. Well guys, and that is all the tools I had to show you. I hope you found this list useful and you saw some tools that you can add to your own tool bag. Now, before I wrap this video up, I do wanna mention one honorable mention and that's a drill, a screw gun, any screw gun. This one's around a hundred bucks, so obviously it didn't make the list. But if you're still one of the people, one of the repair guys that still goes full on manual on your screwdrivers and your nut drivers, I really feel sorry for you. I was just talking to one of my coworkers and he recently made the change. He was always manual, but he recently got a screw gun and started using that instead. And he says it literally changed his life. He's never going back. When I started HVAC, I didn't have a screw gun either. And I remember that feeling I would get when I would get to a unit and it had 30 screws. And I thought to myself, oh, you gotta be kidding me. And there I go, you know, earning myself carpal tunnel, taking out all those screws. So when I got myself a drill, that was revolutionary for me as well. Totally changed my life and obviously I'm never going back. So if you're a technician and you do not yet have a screw gun, I highly recommend doing yourself a favor and for Christmas, just get yourself a screw gun. It'll totally change your life. And lastly, if you have tools of your own that you think are just wonderful, that are under $30, please mention them in the comments below. If I get enough tools that are just awesome that I don't have in my tool bag, maybe I'll make another video of another 10 tools under $30, which are definitely worth having. So preferably under 30 bucks, but honorable mentions are also welcome as well. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comments section below, I have a brother that lives in Hawaii and I've only visited once so far. And that was enough for me to realize that Hawaii is just amazing. The scenery, the ocean, the beach, everything there is just beautiful on all the islands. And recently, I think he wants the rest of us living in Minnesota to feel jealous. He created a YouTube channel where he shows the Hawaiian ocean, the corals, the beach, all the fish. He goes snorkeling with like the high-tech camera, films underwater and overwater with the drone. Just a lot of incredible footage. Looks great. So if you want to check out what it's like in Hawaii, what the Hawaiian ocean looks like, maybe go on vacation there someday, check out his channel, check out his videos. And if you do, make sure you give him some love. You guys are the best. We'll see you next time. Wait, wait, hold on. Before you go to Hawaii, let me tell you a little story. So one couple calls another couple and tells them, hey, you know what? Um, this year, I don't think we're going to invite you to our New Year's party. And the other couple says, what? Why not? We come over every single year. And they say, well, you know, since the last time you came over, last year, since you guys came over, our silver spoons went missing, all of them. And the other couple says, what? No way, it wasn't us. We definitely did not take anything from your house at all. And the other couple says, yeah, yeah, we know. Later on, we found those silver spoons. We know it wasn't you. So the other couple is confused. They're like, what? So what's the problem? And the first couple says, well, you see, that bad impression that we got of you is kind of hard to forget. <laughs>